casting call for the um, the movie trailer we're doing called Murder by Moonlight, and we have guest star here, uh, Tanya. Tanya, why don't you tell you, uh, tell us more about yourself? Well, my name is Tanya. Um, I have a degree in television and film production. I've been working in the industry for over 17 years. I've worked coast to coast for propaganda films, Palomar Productions, ABC, VH1, MTV, um, all sorts of other little small uh, production companies as well. Um, found myself now living uh, just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been teaching digital media for a few years and I'm now teaching honors digital film at the high school level. Um, had the opportunity uh, a few months ago to meet you, Anthony, uh, while directing a promotional video for local band Burning Bright. And we have directed two of their music videos that are doing very well on YouTube um, and looking to get more promotion from them. Right, and um, I will pull up this preview for the YouTube. Um, one second. So this is the preview for the YouTube um, video. Yep, that's the first one we did. That is Love Song. Um, that It's only been up since October and has almost 8,000 hits on it, which is pretty awesome for a local band. That is impressive. It was um, directed by myself and shot entirely by high school students. High school students? Oh, wow. Yes. What yep. musical genre is Burning Bright? Uh, they're kind of an alternative rock. I uh, have a very heavy Foo Fighters influence, um, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, um, everything. They've got a, a great bluegrass background. Um, they can play just about everything. Um, but they really fit into those Foo Fighters, Nirvana, Pearl Jam type fans. That's nice. Rock will never die. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. Yeah, rock, yeah, speaking about rock, I sang a rock song, an original song, just the other night, yesterday. Uh, and of course, uh, tagging along with us, we have Katrina Avino. Katrina, why don't you tell us more about yourself uh, for those who uh, haven't heard from you? Yes, yeah, so I'll be reintroducing myself. I was actually in the first kind of broadcast that we did. Um, I am the co founder, along with my boyfriend, um, of a company named Grok and Load Clothing. We cater to, or we make clothes for targeting country music fans and um, U.S. military. Uh, we started less than a year ago and it's paying off pretty well. We've shipped over to 10 countries, so, or not 10 countries, 10 states so far and three countries. Um, and we're gonna do a relaunch early in 2013 with country singer Ricky Young um, to endorse our brand, so hopefully that takes off pretty good. Um, educational background, I have a communications degree um, with emphasis, emphasis in public relations from Cal State Fullerton here in California. Um, that's pretty much it and I would like to say that I'm very involved with supporting our US military. That's our, com our company, Rough and Load Clothing, also is donating a portion of our sales to them. So we're constantly, me and the company are constantly helping out wounded warriors and veterans. Awesome. Yeah. And just a preview, this is the Rock and Load Clothing. You can view it at rockandloadclothing.com. Uh, so you might be watching this and asking yourself, what, what are we doing this for? Well, this is a joint effort online uh, through Facebook. Uh, we're doing a trailer called Murder by Moonlight. It's for Amazon Studios. And um, if you go to si, that's robrix.com, you can actually view it uh, through this red thingy right here. And uh, it gives you a live broadcast, which is what you're viewing right now. Uh, you can RSVP on Facebook. Um, here is the preview of the Facebook page. Uh, we have a lot of people participating. Uh, and the audition line is this right here. And we're going to preview one of that. And we're going to have a first hand scoop on one of the previews. So uh, let me show you that line. OK. Uh, there is basically, the whole story is a murder mystery. It's a crime mystery. There's going to be the protagonist, the detective. Uh, Joan is actually the, the wife whose husband died, and she's hiring that detective. And there's a whole twist because there's like a super secret society, and we're going to make a quick 90-second trailer that's going to win us up to $3,500. And that's why everyone is teaming up. We have a copywriter. We have a original music for this song. and. We're casting, it looks like, uh, 13 or 12 characters. One, two, three, yeah. 
And uh, yeah, we're going to preview that in just a second. Um, So the given line is a line from Sin City in the beginning of the movie. Um, I'm loading up uh, randomly this one. We're previewing one, and we're going to tell you what we think about it. And, uh, that is to say, uh, it's going to be a the actual uh, casting of the role is going to be done midnight tonight, where we finalize the character, the character, the role of the characters, and which actors are going to play which characters. And, uh, so get ready to preview the Gabriel Croft audition. She shivers in the wind like the last leaf on a dying tree. I let her hear my footsteps. She goes stiff, but only for a moment. I ain't coming to her. I came for you. I've watched you for days. You're everything a man would want. It's just not your face, your figure, or your voice. It's your eyes. All the things that I see in your eyes. What you see in my eyes, I see a crazy calm that'll save her from whatever she's scared of and take her far, far away. I tell her, I love her. That's Gabriel Croft for Moonlight. All right, so what are your thoughts about this, Tanya? Oh, you want me to go first? <laughs> <laughs> you started first, so now you're going to continue that. Uh, you've had uh, a lot of experience, uh, I guess, casting as a director and a producer. Uh, how does this compare to your high school students? And uh, he's going for the main character, Dick Moonlight. Does he have what it takes? Um, I saw a, a good potential in it. Um, it was a little bit hard to to hear. I'd probably want to watch and listen to it again. Um, being that I'm actually from the north, I'm not sure where he was from, if that was a faked Boston accent. Because um, there were some words that, that came across nicely and some that I thought were a little bit too strong. Uh, actually, being from New England. From Boston. It's funny how you say that. Yeah. He is from Boston. Yeah. <laughs> And sometimes when I do my northern accent, I, I push it too far a little bit sometimes. Um, I think if he relaxed, I think with good direction, he could be very good. Um, I think he needed to relax a little bit. The way he spoke the words were very eerie, and his eyes were very eerie, um, which I liked about it. I could see that. His facial expression had a little bit of the Joker going on. Um, so I think that needs to be kind of smoothed out a little bit. So he's not quite as um, half laughing, cynical maybe, and just more straight to the point of just being blindly eerie. There's just something about him that he comes across as a cool, anybody could go up to him and be nice, and if you saw him on the street, you'd think he's just a regular guy and someone you'd want to hang out with. But the way he delivers that line and stares at you, you know there's something wrong behind those eyes. And it's I could funny. see that portion in it. 
Right, and were you able? You did not. Uh, did you able? Were you able to? Uh, did you have the chance to look at the synopsis for Murder by Moonlight? I have not, not actually. You know, it's crazy because whatever you just described is exactly his character. Uh, so what he's trying out for is actually Richard Dick Moonlight, and here is the description I'm about to read to you. Uh, years ago, Dick Moonlight, 48, distraught over a marriage of his ex-wife to his former partner, the Albany Police Department sat down drunk at the kitchen table of his dad's house, pressed the barrel of twenty two caliber revolver up against his temple, and almost pulled the trigger. So that's what he has to go through. And it's crazy how you were able to uh, mm -hmm. see that. And like you said, with a good director, uh, we should be yep. able to get that from the outside. Yep. And my only other thing, that, and it's something that I always try and tell my students when I do it, is um, it, it, as long as you've got a good makeup artist, um, because if it is someone who is supposed to be older and you have a younger person trying to play that role, um, that's something going for major competitions could work against you. Gotcha. So really making sure that they can fit that role and are, are believable in that. Interesting. And Katrina, what are your thoughts about this? Um, I do actually agree with Tanya. You, you were saying, Tanya, you were saying that he kind of portrayed kind of a cynical joker feel and Anthony you said the character that he's auditioning for Dick Moonlight is are you suggesting he is um, kind of a psychopathic character yes yes uh, psychopathic yes uh, but I guess a good psychopath because remember he's working okay. pretty good he's a detective and he is He's just had so much bad things happen to him. Like, yeah. His trauma, you can see his, uh, his pain, and um, yeah. and But he's using that pain for the good to kind of get the bad guys. Um, yeah, yeah, that's why I do kind of disagree with your analysis of Big Moonlight, because to me, it went, I th his character to me is more depressing and sad rather than cynical. Um, you know, I, I did a little research on it, and apparently, like his wife died or something, and he is a he is a military veteran also. And in my experience with military veterans suffering from PTSD and stuff like that, they're very to themselves, kind of mysterious, um, and like I said, depressing. Not so much cynical and Joker-like. Mm -hmm. um, so. Tony, you said he if he works on his facial expressions more, rather than um, portraying, like you said, a Joker. Because I did kind of I did kind of sense that with his audition tape. Um, but I think with his eyes, he, has, he if he works his eyes, he has good emotion. He has something about his eyes. There's a lot of emotion there, and he can work with that a lot. Um, his diction and how he says his words. I think it's pretty good. He, oh, a lot of his pauses are very dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And again, the story is kind of dark and eerie, and that works. Yeah, I was very impressed on uh, his performance uh, to begin with. And I like how he, I, he, he did the black and white. I know, I was going to say that right now. And a little bit about the editor. He actually had to go travel all the way to his friend's house, uh, Justin. He's also a producer at EP, Justin Alamanzar. I got the chance to work with him in one of the uh, filming I was doing, and uh, he's also an actor, but a little bit about uh, Gabriel Croft. Uh, he, I, I know him through my sister, actually, and she, he works with my sister, and he's uh, he just got off a movie in New York. I forgot what movie, but it's a nine-month production, and he just got mm -hmm. off that. So he's going from a full-length movie, a full-length 90-minute movie, into a 90-second trailer. <laughs> He has to kind of compact all those uh, emotions into a smaller package. And uh, the good news is that he just got off battle, so he kind of needs that time to kind of rest. And So it, it shouldn't be hard for him to go through that. And uh, one of the roles that uh, were, was applied on in this movie is actually the detective Moonlight. Uh, there's two other people applying for it, and it's amazing. You know what? what? There's um, a character in this book it's Chris, I think, is the son. I think, like we were talking about, he portrayed a cynical role. Um, and is it Chris that I'm talking about? Uh, Chris Parker is the uh, the playboy. Uh, 
the son yeah, of Yeah, he's the character that gets arrested for committing a murder. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I think he'd be better suited for him. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if, he, if he's even going to, even if you're even going to include that character in the film production. Yeah, the, uh, the production, yeah. We're, we're definitely going to include Chris Parker. And uh, we're going to get. Um, the, the three main characters is going to be Dick Moonlight, Chris Parker, and jo uh, Joan Park Parker. Uh, so those are the most the three most important roles, and we we are casting a lot of people so that you know everyone gets to get a line or two on film. So that's good. But um, let me go ahead and recap on what's going on for those who missed it. And uh, this is a uh, basically a joint Facebook effort, and joining us is Tanya and Tapazio, and. <coughs> Basically, uh, it's an online contest. Well, it's not going to be online as soon as we do the filming and stuff. But the show or the movie is going to be called Murder by Moonlight. It's a book by Vincent Zandri. And for movies, you make a trailer. Um, but this is not a movie. It's a book. So we're actually going to make a film trailer for the book to promote the book. And we're going to make it, uh, you know, Hollywood. -y. So everyone pretty much went on Facebook um, and applied for it. And it's nice because fans will be able to kind of follow on what's happening. And I'm not sure if a movie has done it, something like this, where you can go on Facebook and uh, you know, apply for it. Um, as you see, there's a wide cast, a wide um, range of characters. And you know, taking a look at the character descriptions, um, let's see. And uh, we just previewed one of the videos by uh, Gabriel Kroc. And that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, the negative points is, uh, as Tanya said, there was something about his, uh, not really his accent, but uh, there are certain things he could improve on. But it's fixable with uh, the right direction. So you know, this is just the beginning, the first uh, and that's you. You're the director. Oh, oh, yeah. You're the director. The director gets uh, all the glory for a good movie, but he also gets all the crap if the movie's bad. So I, I have a lot of responsibilities. And for those of you guys who missed it, joining us is Tanya, and she's a producer for Gemstones, and she's also a teacher, uh, and she's done a music video for Burning Bright. And Katrina is the CEO of Rock and Load Clothing, a clothing company uh, t tailoring to military people. Uh, and we discussed that, and that pretty much sums it up. And you know, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned because later tonight at midnight, we're going to have the final casting, where we're going to be assigning all the roles for the movies. And uh, we hope to see you there. Any last words, Tanya or Katrina? Good luck. Uh, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks I can't for wait to see the. How many other audition tapes will we review? Uh, I'm not sure. We'll find out at midnight. Uh, yeah, <laughs> was due, uh, yeah, there was several that was submitted by 10 o'clock, so I just chose one randomly. And, uh, uh, before I let you guys go, or before you close the window, make sure you guys follow us through Facebook. Uh, you can easily get us through si.seroptics.com. And if you click this thing up here, it's going to give you all the updates. Um, and then just simply go here to RSVP and Facebook, and all the information is going to be here. Um, so thank you for joining us, and I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and look forward for this new year. Thank you. Thank you.